Hello and welcome back to Open. Rina Valentin here. Our next guest is uh, sitting in her seat already. And uh, well, she's the author of the book Finding Daddy, Finding Me. The story of a young girl who is born into a wealthy family but is abandoned by her father at an early age. And because of these abandonment issues, the lead character, Chris, decides to pursue a career filled with rejection and tries to find a peace of mind only to realize her father is not the only person she needs to reconcile with. And here to tell us more is Christine Altpari. Good. How are you? Oh, nice. it is our pleasure to have you, right. and you are looking vibrant this morning. You no, know, I gotta wake up. Last night was a big night. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Nice, and you're on the Café con Leche show. Do I represent Café con Leche? Yeah. Thank you. With a double shot. With a double shot. <laughs> nice. 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 Well, um, Christine, can you just share with the viewers a little bit about your background? Because you do various things. You're not just an author. I'm not actually. It's been a sideline for a while, right? I, you know, I first write scripts. I do a lot of on-air work as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been creating uh, selling packages. I've been doing for a long time. I've been fiction. And I truly, I did grow up without a dad, and I had to find him, and I found him living in Paris. He was living as a, uh, an American expat in Paris, kind of a weird place. And this is back in 1993 when you didn't have Facebook, you didn't have Twitter, you didn't have the internet. You had to really, like, send letters to people. You had to find. You had to, you had to really people dig long and distance. Find. And we couldn't find him for years. You know, it was just one of those things he, you know, left. And I really wanted to find him because I when thought When did he leave, though? He left in 1977. How old were you? I was really young. I was 12. You were 12. I was a baby, yeah. Yeah, but he was he was a part of your life. He, yeah. Yeah. It's he, different if you had left when you were like three or four, right. but that it, he had an, an influence already in your... But he traveled, and he right. did influence me, because to this day, I travel a lot for my job. Right. And he was always getting on a plane. Mm -hmm. And that's all I remember, was he was always leaving and coming back. So, hence my abandonment deal was I would always date men that lived out of state. Guys in New York, I lived in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. So guys in California, always. I just And I was like, I've got to reconcile this. Plus, I've always believed in God, you know, whether I have a very deep faith in God. And I knew that, that somehow they were connected. And somebody once told me, the way you perceive God is the way you perceive your father. And my father was cold, aloof, distant, and always leaving. And that's the way I always perceived God. So I figured, okay, A, I need to stop dating guys out of state. B, I've got to think of God as more than some, something way over there. Okay, but how, how did you even get to that point? How did you figure out that you had to make these choices or you had to sh shift your choices? Well, I think we're all on different journeys and right. I knew something wasn't quite right. I wasn't your typical, you know, kid growing up in the suburbs, you know, with a mom and the dad and the brother and the sister, you know, I, my mom. What's was, a typical kid growing up in the suburbs? This day and age, you know, back then there was a typical right. and now there isn't, but you know, I was like, I guess a pioneer back then, right? Cool. <laughs> Which cool. is awesome. Cool. Yeah, because it We love that. Stronger. We love pioneers here. That's right. Exactly. That's where your strength comes from. Absolutely. All right. And, and the pioneering part comes from whatever drama it is that actually led led you to think about it because yes. really that's all that's required is to think about it. You had, and I did a lot of thinking, okay. I did a lot of reading, I did a lot of research and I also had to like, you know, dig into my soul, you know, what's right, what's wrong. So strangely enough, it's, there's an old saying, you know, when the teacher is ready, the student appears and the door is open. And when it was time for me to find him, you know, I was in college and I really just figured this was just a done deal. I wasn't going to ever find him. Well, suddenly, you know, mom sent a Christmas card to some friends of his. Hey, you know what? We know where he is. Just out of the blue. You know, I hadn't, we hadn't spoken in 15 years. So suddenly Just they, out of the blue. Out of the blue. Yeah, but you know you put that out there into the exactly. universe. And it just took, exactly. it, it, you know, the, 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 the actual conspiring took its time to get to you because you needed to be ready. Exactly. And I was, you know, ready to meet him. And I took a flight, booked. I had never been to Europe, never, never been out of the country. Booked a flight, went out. Met him face to face, and he was not what I thought he would be. It was not a happily ever after story. He was an alcoholic. He was hanging out in the French cafes, you know, drinking and, you Going, know, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. Right, English right, is the language right. of business, whatever he would say. What, what, what was it? He used to say English is the language of business. It was English really English is the language of business. Yeah, wow, I'm like, je parle au petit français, so I tried. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good yeah, one. but anyway, so I'm like, you know, I'm in a foreign country. Uh -huh. My father's crazy, and I'm like, now what? You know, and I barely <laughs> right. speak. I have my Berlitz guide. I'm walking around. Je parle petit français. Uh -huh. But it was interesting because I was challenged to rise above the circumstance and just make something of it. So 
a friend of mine came out to meet me. I was there for a month. He came out two and a half weeks into the trip, and uh -huh. you know, I I uh, went home, kind of like, wow, this isn't going to be the quick fix I hoped it would be. I just so hoped I was going to meet my dad and everything was going to be fine, and it wasn't. And I had to just realize, okay, he's made decisions. He's a human being. He's made decisions that I wouldn't make, that I would never make, right? Especially with children. You know, I would never leave children. You know, I just wouldn't do that. How does this lead into your book? Because your book is fiction. It's based on this experience. Obviously, right. It, yeah. It's inspired by exactly. your true story. Right. But it's fiction. Exactly. I had to change the names, obviously, of right. people. And right, to protect events. the innocent. Exactly. Or something like that. Had to like combine that. a few characters, too. A couple cool. of boyfriends got combined. Got it. Make Good. the perfect guy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No, I we like that. that. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Because, you know, they only live in our heads. Exactly. Anyway, no. <laughs> I oh, didn't yeah. Say. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Yeah, it's like you go out with three different, at the time when I was single, I'm married now, but you know, at the time you go out with three different people for one result, I guess, maybe. Yeah, well, this one had that, this yeah. one had this, and then, perfect. Yeah, bring them all together. Yeah, right. Doesn't work so that you, way. Ha you have them in the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. So yeah, it nice, kind of worked nice. out, but he wasn't a perfect character, in the, the, you know, the old boyfriend. Right, there was a couple right, of right, boyfriends right. that kind of came to play in the book. So, so the growing up, uh, uh, excuse me, finding daddy, finding me, yeah. is actually... Uh, a, a book that you wrote, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gathering from what you just shared, yeah. uh, coming back after having met with your father yes. and possibly writing it in a journal form. It's sort of. It chronicles like the release. whole experience. And that's, I kind of went back, you know, growing up and I went through a lot of counseling and my counselor is in the book. She loved it. You know, her, her name is Dr. Nelson. And she walks me through the different steps, you know. So how did you feel when this happened? So then what happened? So she kind of, she's the mainstay throughout the, the book. You know, she chronicles the whole experience. So if a person reads that, uh, what exactly are you sending as a message? Because obviously this is something that you put out there to kind of help somebody. You know what? Even when the cards are stacked against you, which they were at that point in my life when I was younger, you know, I was destined to be a statistic, you know, growing up without a dad, right? I was, you know, maybe, or, and he was, the dad I remembered was not a nice guy. He was abusive. Right. So I had to, you know, kind of get around that. And I didn't want to be a statistic. I wanted to find him. I wanted to resolve it. And I wrote the book to let other people know that maybe they're adopted or maybe they don't have a parent living with them. It's all right. You can still be successful. You can still do whatever you want in your life, especially if you believe you can, because that's all, that's what it's about. And we shape our experience on this planet by our choices and our right. thoughts. Yes, yes. You know? You're absolutely right. It yeah. shifts everything. Exactly. And uh, based on my uh, introduction of you in you initially wanting to reconcile with your father yeah. and then realizing who you really needed to reconcile with was... Was God. God. Absolutely. Because I was so mad at God. You know, it's God's fault that this happened to me. And that wasn't right. You know, we all make choices. God gives everybody on this planet two things. 24 hours in a day and the power of choice. Right. So, Beautiful. We, well and that's how you can reconcile everybody's choices with your own life. That's how you can reconcile life. Yeah, you just turn around <laughs> yourself. So what am I going to do with my 24 right. hours and the power of choice? Exactly. Write a book. Hopefully other people will say, wow, I like fiction. Let me check it out. And, you know, so I like, I, yeah, I enjoy fiction. So that's yeah. why I wrote it in fiction form. Beautiful. We, and we are so honored to have you here. Thank and you. of course, the name of the book is Finding Daddy, Finding Me, and it's Christine Alpari. And where can they get it? Yes. Uh, oh, uh, Amazon.com. Sorry. Amazon.com. Yes, it's on my website, right? www.christinealpari.com. I'm Facebook, Twitter, all that, and then Google. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're really glad that you came here. And I'm thank glad you're, you're sharing this story. Thank you so I'm much. I'm sure it will change your lives. Yes, I hope so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Christine Alpari, everybody. Make sure you check her out uh, at christinealpari.com. And of course, the book, you can find it on, at amazon.com. All right, we got to take a quick break because coming up, it's sports. And you know, the Yankees are in town. So I guess Bobby's got all the scoop. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs>